June 15th public hearing uh, for utility grant to some locations. So to start off, in accordance with Governor, Baker, uh, Governor Charles uh, Baker, March 10th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, the city of Quincy, the city Quincy Council will be convening via remote conferencing services that will air on Quincy Access Television, QATV, and channel QATV9 government access. And so I believe that um, uh, if if um, the way uh, this 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 goes, if uh, you want to participate. Uh, through video, uh, you just you just hit the raise your hand function by clicking raise your hand. If you're participating, participating by calling in, um, just hit star nine, uh, and your phones will single signal raising your hands. Then all of you can have have what you have to say, and um, and and here we go with with Zoom. So. Um, we have four utility locations. We're going to do them all at once. Uh, it's 2020-056 utility grant location, Mass Electric, 56 and 72 Colonial Drive. And then we have 2020-57 utility grant of location, Mass Electric, Calvin Road, Meadowbrooks, Meadow, Broad Meadows Middle School. And then we have the 2020-088 utility grant location, National Grid Gas, 76 Field Street. And then we have the 2020-089 utility grant location, National Grid Gas on Dimmick Street. So, uh, uh, so is there anybody who would like to speak on any of these uh, uh, locations of either for or against? Um, just raise your hand, and we'll we'll put you right in on the um, right in on the uh, hearing. So, do we have anybody that would like to speak in against the those four locations? Okay, seeing none. Uh, anybody who would like to speak in favor? Would like to raise your hand. So, having. Uh, Ernest, uh, Ernest Gervinano raised their hand. Ernest Gervino, thank you. Hi, so, Ernest. Uh, just to make sure I'm on the right topic, I'm interacting regarding uh, 61 Colonial Drive, which is the national grid project of tying into uh, the existing service that I have on my property. Uh, Could you just state your address? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jen. 61 yeah. Colonial Drive. Go ahead, go ahead, Ernest. Thank you. So I have a couple of questions. Um, I'm not sure if National Grid will be presenting or saying anything tonight. And one of my questions was that um, this project, it's not new construction that it's being changed for. This There's already an existing service coming from uh, an existing location, but the neighbor has decided not to cooperate and allow uh, my neighbor to use that. So they've been, these houses have been here since the 70s. So first I wanted to know if National Grid had other options rather than tying into my box uh, that I share with someone at 55 Colonial Drive already. It's not uh, that I oppose it. Yes, so um, um, there is a, uh, uh, representative from National Grid, um, if he would like to introduce himself, is that our, is that uh, protocol? If I'm correct, I'd like to introduce himself and answer Ernest's um, question. Is somebody from National Grid? Did I hear was on? Yeah, Pearson was in the waiting room, I believe, Councilor. Yes, he needs he's, to be he's muted. Yeah, he's muted. Oh, he's there, but he's muted. And so who's controlling that? Is that me? I am, but in, I, I requested that he unmute himself, but he ultimately has to do it on his end. Oh, here we go. Yeah, can you hear me? There yes, you are. Yes, there there you are. Go ahead. That's National Grid. Okay. Um, yeah, bear with me on this. Um, in regard to the gentleman's question, uh, there is no other place to take it from. Either that or we would have to go down the street, I guess, to, to another handhold, dig up the street. 
and come across. Um, this has been going on now since January. And the poor woman, she only has one leg of her service. If, if, if the service lets go, she's not going to have any power to her house for a while. So this is basically the only viable route. Um, when this subdivision was built, I guess in the 70s, mm. how that handhold got put in that middle of that driveway, we have no idea. But we're here to try to rectify it with the rental location for the two conduits that are going to come across the street um, from Ernest's handhold across the street into 56, uh, 56 Colonial Drive, where the customer is going to put a handhold on her property and refeed her electrical service. And I guess she's going to abandon the old location. Ernest, does that answer your question? It does. And I just have several other comments. As I said, my earlier statement, I didn't oppose what they were doing, but I wanted National Grid to make that statement publicly. So um, since there are no other options financially is what I'm hearing, uh, there are options, but they're probably more pricey. Um, I wanted to know how disruptive it's going to be to myself at 61 Colonial Drive and my neighbor at 55 Colonial Drive. Um, I want to make sure that this will be placed below grade. I know they're going to put in a new concrete box to make it larger, but I want to make sure that it's below grade. And the other question I had for Mr. Pearson is, will it cause a reduction in power to 61 and 55 Colonial Drive? Because 10 years ago, I had to uh, increase my service to my home as well as my neighbor at 55. And then National Grid finally came in and upgraded the connecting lines back to the original source. So I just don't want that same problem when we have lights flickering all the time. The other the, question- Yeah, the- Go ahead, sir. Yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, the cable is definitely large enough to, to pick up all three parties involved. That That's no problem. Yes, it will be below grade. Right now, I believe you have a, a bird, bird bath sitting on it. So. When it's finished, it'll be based the way you have it now. Everything will definitely be below grade. It will be enlarged to accommodate the two condos going across the street. Okay. And will there need to be a transformer in that hole as well? No. Good. No, no transformers okay. required. Good. So a few more questions and I'll be done with my comments. Uh, in terms of the timeline, I know when I spoke to you the other day, you had commented you think this will be starting in August. Is that accurate? Uh, we can go, depending on when we get the grant from city council, I mean, we could, we can definitely work with you. And uh, I know 56 is getting a little anxious because air conditioning weather is coming up. We can probably do a little sooner than, than August. But yeah, I, I would say that would be roughly the time frame, definitely. And would adequate uh, contact be done? The reason being, uh, as a doctor, I sometimes answer uh, calls and inquiries 24-7. And my wife is working from home as a member of environmental health and safety at Boston University. So if we learn that we're going to be losing power, electricity, internet, et cetera, we now need to find another location to respond to things. Um, that's the only thing I make sure we'd have adequate notice for when you're doing things. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. definitely. You, you had commented that service should only be down for a few hours, but allowing for normal things that could go wrong allowing even a day just to say there's interruption. Um, that would be more than enough time to get the project done? Yes. Okay. And uh, so the completion should be within 24 hours. And uh, since it's essentially the same thing, there will and there's no transformer, there will not be any electromagnetic field from this added service, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And uh, at the completion, you're going to make sure that everything is restored and replaced to my satisfaction. Whatever shrubs are destroyed or have to be uh, taken out, uh, that will be replaced, correct? Correct. Uh, we have a, our civil group has a landscaping company that can come in and put everything back to where we found it. Perfect. So, okay. and providing that they don't suddenly expire within a matter of time once they're replanted. They shouldn't, because when we did that project uh, 10 years ago, we replanted everything and it worked out real well. So I don't expect any issues. Um, and yeah, National Grid is ultimately responsible for any consequential damages that might occur. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, those are all my comments and questions at this time, City Council. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Ernest. Did I see that the two hands were raised? Uh, were two hands raised or are they down now? Yep. And can we 
clicked on to, and please say your name and address. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. John Rotafield, 62 Grenwall Road. Um, I just want to say I'm in 100% full support of this project. Um, people um, have the right to have electricity and, um, you know, they anyone has the right to connect to the electrical panel. So National Grid does a great job. They did a great job during the hurricane, and I'm sure they'll do the best job that they can on this job. I live in the neighborhood, 62 Grenwall Road. There's plenty of power. Everything always goes good. We had um, the tree fall down, a wire came down, National Grid within 24 hours had the thing right back up. So I just want to say I'm 100% in support of this. And thank you very much for serving and thank you very much for working during the pandemic. Everyone's thank doing you, a great John. job. Thank you. Appreciate it, John. And who was the other folk person who raised their hand? Sean O'Connor. Sean O'Connor. Are you on? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How you doing? No. Right. Um, Name and address? 55 Colonial Drive, Sean O'Connor, Sean mm -hmm. and Ellen O'Connor. Um, sure. I concur with um, Ernie's, Ernie's questions. I'm just, I'm not going to repeat everything. I mean, we both did our powers over in the last, from 10 years and five years from me. Um, no concerns as, as long as the magnetic field is not there, we're not going to have a transfer mother. That's great. Anything that they, um, the neighbors need is no problem at all. Awesome. Um, so Thank I, you. I'm definitely for, forward to this. So it was Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. And, um, uh, and certainly, um, we'll hold, uh, national grid to, the, to their word. Um, with that being said, uh, any, I don't see any other raised hands. So it is now. Um, 612, and I will end the public hearing um, at 612. Thank you, folks. And we'll be going right into the finance committee meeting. And uh, you're on, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Good evening, folks. I'd like to uh, call to order the Monday, June 15th uh, meeting of the Quincy City Council Finance Committee. In accordance with Governor Charles Baker, March 10, 2020, order super, suspending certain provisions, of the open meeting law, the Finance Committee of the Quincy City Council is meeting via remote conferencing services that will air on Quincy Access Television, Channel 9, Government Access. Madam Clerk, can you call a roll? Councilor Kane. Councilor Kroll. Present. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Harris. Present. Council Liang. Present. Council Mahoney. Present. Council Pamucci. Present. Council Phelan. Present. Chairman McCarthy. Present. Nine members, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'd like to read uh, the open meeting law if I could. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Good evening, everyone. Um, hopefully, we will be able to get through tonight's meeting uh, unscathed. And um, I'd like to uh, jump in, if I could, um, right into a few of the items that we had tabled uh, the last go around of the finance committee meeting. The first item is the question that I believe um, Councilor Yang brought up about the Furnace Brook golf course. I'd like to uh, turn it over to Mr. Mason, if he could, for a few comments, and then we can proceed with that item. Eric? Mr. Mason? You guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Good evening, Council. Uh, so I believe, Mr. I believe Mr. Walker forwarded you over um, an outline saying that um, it is appropriate to cut that line down to $130,000. Um, we were able to review it. I was able to speak with the city solicitor, and we do feel comfortable with that cut. Okay, thanks, Eric. I believe I'm going to, um, if I could, Council Liang, um, I believe the cut was for 66 543 Correct. Which would bring a new total to one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. 
Um, I'd, I'd uh, like to continue uh, with this uh, motion to, to make this cut. Um, could I get a motion? Uh, so motion. I'd like to make a cut of $66,543 from line item 570800. Thank you. Do I get a second? Second. Second. On the motion, any, any comment? No comment. Okay, could we do a roll call vote on this cut? Councilor Kane. Yes. Council Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council Pamucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. Jim and McCarthy. Yes. My members, the cut passes. Thank you. And could I also get a motion to approve the Furnace Brook Golf Course budget now as amended by Council Liang? Motion by Councilor Kane. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose the ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, the next item that um, we had questions on, Councilor Palmucci uh, brought it up uh, as an item to be discussed was the health insurance um, line item, the two point four million. Quincy College line item, uh, and I don't know if Patty's on. Uh, no, but I think it looked like I'm going to go to Mr. Walker to talk about the health insurance section. Who are you, Mr. Chairman? Um, essentially, the document speaks for itself. That was the, the question that was asked uh, by Council Palmucci relative to the amount that uh, is incorporated into the health insurance budget that accounts for Quincy College employees. Uh, that is uh, what is uh, what was delivered to the body on uh, Thursday or Friday. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Any questions for Mr. Walker? Councilor Pamucci. Councilor uh, Mahoney. Did, did Councilor Pamucci want to go before me? I think he might have his hand up first. No, it's okay. You can go okay. first. I just had a question because um, what was delivered to us on Thursday or Friday, I believe, was for 2021's budget. I guess my question still remains in the 2020 budget because that's going to have a revenue deficit. So how does that get paid? Right. Through you, Mr. Chairman, um, the 2020 budget is reflective of what you've seen uh, in the revenue report that was provided earlier. Uh, again, as I as I said last week, let me, and let me say this. Uh, Council and to the, to the full committee um, that this was not adequately communicated this issue uh, to the body. Uh, that's my job. Um, and I, and I didn't do that. I, I, I didn't recognize uh, that this was going to be coming up as an issue. Um, so that revenue shortfall is reflective of what the college budget is. And again, as I said at the last meeting, uh, there was discussion with the college understanding the situation they're in um, that, that if they were able to, uh, bounce back a little bit financially by the time we close the books in September and by the time we can't uh, count on that revenue anymore in September, that this would be offset, uh, but that if they could not, uh, the city would absorb that cost and has the ability to do so. Could you expand on the closing the books in September? Because I thought the books closed at the, the when you when you filed the books, it was after June 30th was the books closed and you have 30 days to collect those revenues. How can you, how can you book against revenues in September when you've already started 2021? I'm just, I'm asking. No, I, I understand that. Um, I'm going to refer to Mr. Mason on the technicalities of that. And it, perhaps I misused the term close the books. I think essentially council were allowed to collect revenue even after a certain point up to September. So even though the, the books are closed, we do, we have until September to collect that revenue. Mr. Mason, if you could help me out on this one. Yes, uh, absolutely. I would like to interject this. Um, we are, but like accounting in the private sector, we operate off a of cural based accounting. So what matters is when the revenue was supposed to be received. So we actually record revenues from FY20 into August. Um, the books <laughs> being closed is, is the date in which an accrued, an accrued revenue cannot look, can no longer be received afterwards. But this is a cural based accounting, not cash based accounting. Okay, so so your accrual based accounting, how long can you, do you have a whole year to collect it? When, when you know, you, What's your time frame for that? Because I know what a cural based account like I know what it is to a to a group. So, because you have to you have to certify your cash 
and set your tax rate for the next year. So I'm trying to understand and your you, your your cash, your your revenue deficits will be looked at by the state when you actually put your budget in together for 2021. Okay, so, so to, to just uh, interject a few things here. Uh, revenue deficit isn't, uh, you. I believe you, your council, I'm just trying to, it is a fund deficits what, what's relevant. Um, revenues don't have deficits, they're just non-received. Uh, expense accounts can have deficits, funds can have deficits, mm -hmm. but revenues can have deficits. They can have shortfalls if they don't complete to what they originally budgeted for. Um, so just to clarify that, um, but if we look at when the last, we receive revenues that we book uh, all the way up until sometimes in August and September, up until about the end of the first quarter of the next fiscal year is considered relevant, uh, relevant and appropriate time to collect those revenues. Mm -hmm. So, so in this particular case, you're saying this wouldn't be a revenue; it would just be something that they didn't pay. Yeah, I mean, it would, if they don't pay something, if we don't receive a revenue, it's a reduction in whatever total that revenue was supposed to be. So, so, if they don't, so, so, so just to, to expand on that, Mr. Mason, if they were not, if they don't, if they're not able to bounce back, where does the two point five four million dollars come from? Does it come from free cash? Where do we pay that from? Uh, it would become a revenue shortfall, so it wouldn't come from free cash. Free cash would kind of appropriation. It would just reduce our overall net surplus at the end of the period. Okay. And what other areas of the budget do we have? Do we do we have concerns of that in? Are there um, any other areas? No. Is it, just this, I mean, is it just this one? No. So the budget's an expense document. So that's why we do year and transfers. Our budget is in the black. This is revenue shortfall. That's separate from the budget. No, I, the I understand. What are, what other areas? That, are there any other areas that we had revenues that we were we were planning on getting in that we might be shortfall on? I mean, we, we did discuss the fees and permits. I mean, this was part of that revenue presentation we gave uh, in mid May. Um, I would say uh, building fees and permits are also one that is substantially lower. But you also have increases. We got you know almost ten times as much FEMA reimbursement as we originally thought. Yeah, but they're so you're saying because they're revenue accounts, but they're part of the general. They're part of our general. They're part of our budget. So we budget this money that, that we think we're going to get in, and we use it in our budget. Is that correct? No. Yeah, so budget is ex is an expense document. I so understand that. But we also, when we're doing the budget, we're also anticipating that we're going to get. We're, we're anticipating certain things as we're building the budget. How we're going to be able to offset our our expenses and yes. fees are some of those things that we do that too. Yes. Okay. So if we're if we're not meeting that that fee, if that fees are coming in, how do we how do we know we're gonna get it next year and how do we know we're not gonna be in the same boat next year? No, with everything it's about forecasting. What's the likelihood of an event to occur again? Um, so look with budget budgeting is primarily modeling. So how do we model will we take previous historic data and we extrapolate and create degrees of confidence on how we can further receive that data? That's why Standard and Poor so heavily stresses budgetary modeling along with revenue modeling. Okay. So we're anticipating that next year, 2021, that's going to be close to $2.4 million again, correct? Yes, that's, that's my assumption. Okay. And then same thing for fees and permits. What do we anticipate for next year? Are we anticipating a drop in that or the same amount? Yes. Yeah, so by state law, we can't overstate the amounts received unless we have a specific reason why we should see it increase. I personally believe, if you, especially if you look at some of the new housing data, uh, if you follow some of the Fed data, that we are going to see building fees and permits increase. I think that's just the state for every uh, for every one for every one new housing unit that's built. That can only have historically the market says that only houses 1.1 individuals with Quincy's growing population. It's very believable that we're going to have a fairly increase in housing demand, which means we're going to have an increase in building fees and permits. Okay. And as of now, as of today, 615, have we received anything in regards to, we haven't received anything from the college, right? No, we have not. And we're in communications with them. And do we think we might? What's the likelihood that we will see that? Do we have any? No, I, defer to, I defer to Mr. Walker on that. Council, we have a new president starting today. Uh, mm -hmm. I would probably defer any sort of analysis on what we can or can't expect come September until he gets uh, his boots on the ground and, and starts running over there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. Um, Chair recognizes Council Palmucci. Thank you, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, Susan, question for you. If we cut this line item, what, what does that mean? What's the effect of that? 
if we were to cut this to 0.4 million, whatever the number is specifically? I personally would not recommend to make a cut of that particular line. Um, just because it's less for you to audit. <laughs> no, it's we are obligated to to pay whether the money's there or not. So what would happen is um, I'm assuming the administration would come before the city council when this count account would run into a, a shortfall if we were not to receive the revenues in from the college and they would have to come before you in order for them to pay the um, Blue Cross bill. So we would have to pay it when? Before? Well, currently as the budget is right now, there's plenty of money in, in there to cover the costs of the Blue Cross bills throughout say fiscal 21. What would happen is as we go on, we're not gonna be receiving if, if we don't get money in from Blue Cross, uh, from the college, what will happen is we will not, we will be short in our revenue again. So I would not recommend cutting it um, because I feel like un unless they're not going to use, if they're not going to use an estimate in their budget, um, revenue budget for next year for the college. So, so tell me what the procedure would be. Um, if that line item runs out of money, what's the procedure? And we wanted to fund it. What would be the procedure? The mayor could put in a uh, request for could an appropriation. Could you repeat that again? I can't hear you. What? Well, sorry, from Echo in that basement. Um, what would be the procedure if we wanted to fund that later on when the account ran out of money? The mayor would what put would in we, an, a mid-year appro appropriation. He would have to put in yes, but however. If, if the administration used an estimate in their revenue, but well, what I'm assuming is if we don't receive anything this year from Quincy College, at the time we go to do the tax recap, we will not be allowed by the Department of Revenue to estimate because we did not collect any revenues. So right. therefore- So we can't estimate it as revenues for next year. No, we cannot. Right. Well, so, so if you, in, if you were to mind, cut the budget, if you sorry, if you were to cut the budget by that amount of money, there possibly could be a shortfall in that line at some point, which the administration would have to come before the city council to request an appropriation, to, you know, to be made to make that account whole again. And as long as that happens, and as long as that happens before we set the tax mm -hmm. rate in December, it's not going to impact the tax rate, right? As long as, yes, it would have to happen prior to the tax rate being set in December. Okay, so the only other negative consequence would be that we can't count it as income for next year. I'm sorry, as revenue for next year. Correct. Did you say correct? Sue? Hello? Hi. Can you just repeat that? Because sorry, my computer cut out. Oh, that's okay. Um, so the only so, negative, the only short term, you know, assume the council is going to approve. I'm just hypothetical, right? Okay. Say we cut it now, but we're open to approving it in December after somebody explains to us why they're not paying and what their plan is to pay next Correct. year. Say, say that's the standpoint. I, I don't know that it is. Say that's the standpoint that the council takes. The only negative harm that would come from doing that, as long as we appropriate the money before we set the tax rate in December. The only harm that could come from that um, from that that vote from that cut would be when you go for the tax recap. You can't count that two point four as revenue for next year, right? So, uh, if we do not if we do not receive any money by the thirtieth of June in the city count in the uh, sit, the college revenue line for health insurance costs. It will, it come the fall when we do the tax recap and we estimate our revenues, we, the Department of Revenue, the Department of Revenue will not allow us to put an estimate in there because you can only put in what you have collected. Right. So, I mean, in my head, we didn't get paid this year. I don't anticipate we're going to get paid next year, and I'm not comfortable uh, expending this money without knowing that we're going to get reimbursed next fiscal. Right. 
So there's no negative consequence as long as we. Um, as long as long as if there happened to be a shortfall in the expense account, that um, the administration administration brings forth an appropriation to the city council prior to the bill being due, so we could pay the bill. Okay. Can you tell me the line item number this is and the exact amount? Uh, yeah. One moment, please. It is the medical insurance line, which is account number 01-914-54-570-806. The amount in the budget as, as it stands for fiscal 21 is 47,763,985. So where's that, that two point? That's in the 2.4 million is in the expense. I mean, excuse me, in the revenue line. All right. And so what is that number? The um, number in the revenue line is 2,400,000. I'm doing some math here. Keep in mind the 2,400,000 was an estimate. So I don't, I, I don't know if it, if that's what the actual cost would have been for them to reimburse us in fiscal 20. All right, thank you, Sue. Uh, Mr. You're Chairman, I move, I move to cut uh, line item 01914545708086 by 2.4 million to 44.6 million. Okay, so there's a, a motion on the floor to make a cut. Do I have a second on the motion? Mrs. Mahoney? Sorry, just can I ask a point of clarification? So are we on, looking on the motion, Councilor Yang? Thank you. Uh, are we looking to make a cut to the revenues or to the to the budget? So if I can explain that, so the the revenue part. Point of order. Point of order. We, I'd like a clarification from the auditor, please. What's my motion? So I'm going to explain what my motion is. The motion is to cut the revenue line. I mean, is to cut the. Uh, expense line by the same equal amount that we didn't get in the revenue line. The 2.4 million was supposed to come in um, as revenue. It didn't. So I'm cutting the expense to match the, the, the revenue that didn't come in. That's what the purpose of the motion is. So on, on that note, I want to recognize Councillor Kane's um, point of order uh, and go to Sue O'Connor. Sue, is that correct? You can, you cannot, you were not allowed to cut a revenue line you are allowed to cut an expense line, which is what I believe Councilor Palmucci is suggesting. So we're cutting an expense line? Um, I recognize Mr. Walker, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The way I'm sort of looking at this is it's almost a double dip in terms of uh, a revenue issue or an expenditure issue because the revenue issue is relative to fiscal 2020. And that's going to be absorbed via surplus if it has to be absorbed at the time when we have to make that determination. The budget is the budget. That's the money we have to spend as a city, regardless of whether or not Quincy College meets its, its contribution to the health insurance line. Uh, if for some reason Quincy College doesn't make that payment next year, we still have to pay that. And in fact, when we talk about the future of the college and the needs of the college and what the city's responsibilities are as the college, we own the entire burden of the college if things don't turn around over there. So while this number, and again, and I uh, acknowledged at the beginning of this, the difference in the, 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 the issue with the communica communicating this revenue issue to you, but this is purely a revenue issue and it's two different fiscal years. And again, I would just reiterate that should the college fail to meet, uh, fail to bounce back, fail to, to do the things we know that they can do in the next year or two, we're gonna own all of the obligations from the college, all of the financial obligations. And it's gonna be a lot more than $2.4 million. 
Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Um, hang on, Councillor uh, Kane. I'm going to go to Councillor Kroll. He had his hand up, and I'll come right back to you. Councillor Kroll? No, it's okay. I'll, I'll yield to let Councillor Kane oh. just start. Okay. Councillor Kane, you got the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so this, uh, I mean, this sounds great, a $2.4 million cut, or it's not a cut from the budget, actually. It's a cut from would-be revenue that we don't receive anyway. Is that correct? Or that we haven't received? No, it's through you, Mr. Chairman. If, if I'm being asked the question, I don't, I don't know if I am. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I want, I would, I'm going to direct my questions to uh, Madam Auditor. Okay. Um, I just want this to be exactly clear because I'm not exactly certain what we're doing, what the ramifications are. Um, but I do understand the, the burden side. But if that burden is so heavy, what we're actually having a conversation about is whether or not the college is viable. And that's a whole different discussion. So if the burden does fall, if the business isn't working, you're going to shut it down. So we don't have to have that burden. But what we're talking about here, what I am trying to understand is this $2.4 million, which is coming out of the... Um, the line for medical insurance, no? Right. Uh, okay, so does this does this have an impact on, on people that, are, that we're currently supporting at the college? Will they not, in fact, be able to receive their medical insurance because we're taking this money away? Are you asking me? Yes, please. I, I believe they still will be able to receive their benefits because we're responsible for that. What will, what's happening is the revenue shortfall is in fiscal year 2020. So that revenue shortfall, if per chance we do not collect that by the end of June, when it's time for the city to do their free cash certification, at that particular time, the Department of Revenue, that's where we'll have to make it up through that. They'll, I believe our free cash might be reduced by that amount. Um, also, they might make us put it on the recap. I'm not sure. When you're cutting the expense line, all that's really doing is, is you're, you're putting a cut forward. And it, it, if need be, you would have to come back and, ref, and, and fill that $2 million cut or $2.4 million cut prior to the recap, prior to the tax rate getting set. And... At that point in time, that would have to be the administration coming before the council because you cannot suggest for them to come back in front of you. So we're passing an expense down the river regardless? I believe so, yes. So either way, whether it's today we cut it and we pay it later or we pay it today and that's it? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councilor Kroll. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <laughs> couple things um you know as i kind of listen to the the conversation go here um first of all i just want to commend uh mr walker uh for kind of stepping up and taking ownership on that i mean you're absolutely right i think uh you know we heard a lot about uh kind of the breakdown in communication as it relates to <clears throat> this particular item last council meeting they don't necessarily want to regurgitate that um, but I do appreciate you taking ownership because I, I know uh, it came to uh, a lot of people surprise and myself included. Um, as I kind of listened to the discussion here this evening and, um, you know, Madam Otter, I can absolutely see where you're kind of uh, creating the, the separation as to, you know, how this thing could potentially roll itself out. My question is, like, we're making a cut the budget for fiscal year 2021 correct that's the motion on the floor correct, correct. Okay. so by doing that we're essentially saying that uh well a couple things and this is where i kind of i'm losing the narrative a little bit so please indulge me we're cutting next year's budget which begins in july 1st uh, basically saying, you know, that's an account receivable to the city of Quincy for fiscal year 2021, right? Like, or is $2.4 million baked into the fiscal year 2021? Mm -hmm. I.e., are we putting the bill for 2021? Every year when the city right. budgets for, for medical insurance, 
it's it's the total cost. It's the city and it's the college and it's the school. So every year what happens is we have your you pay you have it in your budget. And then right. what happens on the revenue side, you estimate revenues based on what the projections are, what their expenses are going to be during the fiscal year. So we will have a revenue shortfall and if we and if we do not collect anything, we will have to make that up on the revenue side through through our free cash certification. Correct. So what's happening now is essentially a shift in policy. And I would kind of direct that to Mr. Walker as presented, right? Because we looked at the revenue sheets. My understanding is we took whatever the obligation for the college was and traditionally divided it by 12. And we recaptured, excuse me, their share of the benefits every month. But that didn't happen, right? So we're making a decision here, a policy decision to, um, you know, for lack of a better word, bail them out this year. Correct? For you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. As, as it relates to 2020, that's the discussion that was had. That was the discussion I did not bring to this body. It would not be a decision by this body necessarily, but that's the discussion I didn't bring to you as it relates to 2020. Um, that we were on the understanding that there was a chance based upon everything that's going on over there, that there would be a revenue shortfall and what would be the potential of the city backing their revenue shortfall uh, for the current fiscal year. Uh, and that's what we had discussed with them, that if they weren't able to meet that, the city would, as we would probably, we would have to anyways, in the end, if God forbid the school closes tomorrow and we still have employees that were there they're no longer employed, but we still have to pay them for this past fiscal year health insurance. We would still have to absorb that. Um, so that was the discussion that was had relative to fiscal 2020. And that's the discussion that I didn't bring before this body. What's before this body now? No, I understand that. Okay. There is, you know, a shift in policy as it relates to the current fiscal year that we're in. Right. Traditionally, they pay every month. That's not correct. A correct. It's a change in policy. And I guess like, you know, going back in the time machine and I was a, might've been a freshman counselor. I remember we took a vote on a resolution or might even been a home rule petition to essentially create separation between the, 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 the city and the college. And we established some sort of like special operating account, if you will. That, that is correct. And is throughout all the legislation, throughout all the history of the college, uh, one thing has still not changed. There's been changes in governance. There's been changes within the, the role that the city plays. There's been changes in how the city uh, incurs costs. But what has not changed is that ultimately the college is still a department of the city. And as the college goes, so does the city. If the college fails, uh, and this goes a little bit to Council Kane's comment, if the college fails, it's not like we, we go to zero. Uh, and don't owe anything because everybody's unemployed, the, the building's locked up and that's it. There are obligations uh, and they would be substantial uh, for employees that just because they're no longer employed does not mean we don't have a financial obligation for them. You're talking about retirement contributions. You're talking about a bunch of other right. things that I'm not 100% right. studied up on. Uh, but what has not changed over the course of that time, Council, as I said, is the fact that the college is a department of the city. Yep. And I have nothing but uh, high praise for Quincy College. And, um, you know, Dr. D coming into this role, I think is going to do a great job. Um, my question is, like, we're kind of pivoting here. And I get it. It's unprecedented times. And, you know, people and municipalities across the country are taking unprecedented measures. But I just wonder, are we setting ourselves up for a precedent? Like, is the internal discussion that, uh, you know, we're going to be covering their bets in fiscal year 2021. The internal discussion was to get them to a place for the current fiscal year uh, where they would be in better shape for the upcoming year uh, and then take it on a year by year basis. The college as it stands right now is very much in a year by year situation. I don't want to paint too dark of a picture uh, because we see a lot of positive signs relative to the school itself and community colleges in general. 
Um, we think with the leadership of Dr. Cristofaro and some of the changes uh, that he's going to make, uh, some of the improvements he's going to make, uh, that we're going to be in very good shape in the future. Now, um, not circling around to council, I don't, I don't mean not to be direct about it, but there's been no determination relative to 2021. Uh, it would be our hope that 2021 is a better year and the college will meet its obligation. Uh, but we certainly haven't ruled that out uh, going forward or ruled it in. Uh, we're taking it year by year. Right. But again, I think it, it sort of lends itself whether or not we want to you know, say openly that it's a policy change, but what we're contemplating right now, it, it, it is a change from the way that it had been sort of rolling itself out at least since what, 2000, early, maybe 2013, 14, when we did that, that act of legislation. So um, I struggle with that. I mean, another question too, and I know that, um, yeah, I don't know if this is fairly directed at you, but I think about this, like the shortfall that we're seeing now, is that uh, the total of the overall obligation for the college less say the employee's contribution to the healthcare equals $2.4 million? I believe so, yes, counsel. So, okay, you, your belief is that they're, they are taken into account because right every pay cycle, people pay into their healthcare. Yeah, correct. I would have to imagine that that is backed out when we end up with 2.4? That, that is correct. Okay, all right, um, thank you. Any, any, any other, uh, before I go back to Council Palmucci, Council Phelan? Um, just looking at this, although I, I support the, the idea of, cu of cutting the money, I'm never opposed to that, but I gotta say, it's just a bill we're gonna, it's pay me now or pay me later. And I would not wanna make a mistake by paying that. I know when we go through the, through the, the hoops with the state, and the Department of Revenue, when they come in and they're going to look at everything, it can sometimes really, the, to, to you, to Madam Auditor, would, would that be a penalty on us if we didn't pay, if, if we cut this and then wait until January to, before, we, before we do the tax rate? Would that not be almost like a penalty being put on us? Well, I don't know if it would necessarily be a penalty, but we have an obligation and we're under contract to Blue Cross Blue Shield for medical insurance for all employees, whether they work for the city of Quincy or whether they work for Quincy College. So we are under an obligation to pay those bills. If per chance that there becomes a shortfall in that account, the administration would have to come back before the city council with an appropriation to cover that shortfall in order for the bill to be paid as the bill would not be able to be paid prior to that without the appropriation. So basically, I'm just worried that if we don't pay these bills, say we pay them in December, there's gonna be a bill in Ju July, August, September, October, November, that so, are gonna come out. So, so we're um, paying the I'm payment. Sorry. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. So each, each month what happens is the HR department gets in a bill from Blue Cross. At that particular time, there's a process that they go through to determine what is the employer share versus what is the employee share. The bill that the, the city receives is for the employee and the employer share. So we take money out of the liability account because through the payrolls on the city side, the money comes in through the liability account. And then every quarter, I, I happen to work with the HR department and we put together a memo to send up to finance to, to reclass or to actually do a transfer out of the liability account into the expense account, which is that medical line that we're talking about. So we are under an obligation that we do have to pay this bill regardless. So you're fine in the beginning of the fiscal year because you have over $40 million. But as the fiscal year goes on, that money is now going down 
and there could be a month that you would not have the money if you make the cut because we still are paying for all of these employees. And I think we've been lucky where we've been able to maintain our credit rating and stuff like this. I think this can end up messing with that. I can imagine what the auditors are going to say when they see it, having gone through a couple audits with the city. Um, okay. Uh, thank, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, before I go back to Council Palmucci, just a couple of comments. I, I, uh, I'm going to refer to that, um, 2013 council crawl was that um, order with Quincy College. But, you know, when I look at it, um, as Mr. Walker states, you know, in various locations, a municipal college in the department of the city, I know they've had their tough times over there recently. And um, one thing I think we should be getting behind them rather than building up um, more problems with Quincy College as a council ourselves, as a body. Um, it's a unique situation, but it's one that we own and it it's here in Quincy. And I, I think a lot of us, I think everybody on this, on this conference call tonight wants Quincy College to succeed. So I think we need had to figure out how to, to fund this instead of putting them in a corner, a worse corner than they are already and help them get out of it. So um, um, I'm not going to support a, a, a cut if, 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 if it comes up here tonight. I'm going to refer back to Councilor Palmucci. Uh, I, I see his, his hand up, and I want to recognize him once again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the issue isn't about the money per se. It's about that there's been a change in policy here. Um, we have not traditionally paid money out to fund the college. This would be one of the first times since I've been on the council um, that, that that's happened. So it's a significant policy change. And I, I would support that policy if it came before the council and they said we need two and a half million dollars because the, the college has a deficit. Absolutely, I'd pay that. We want, we want to be supportive of the college. It's an important, um, uh, it's a very important part of the city, part of the community. Uh, but we need to have a policy discussion. So what my, my, my goal was with this is you kick over the health care payment until December, uh, the administration would have to come back to us with a special singular order to fund that, uh, uh, the remainder of that payment before we set the tax rate. And then we could have a larger discussion uh, on the policy issues around Quincy College. Uh, we, you know, we haggle with a uh, department had over $100,000 change in their budget. This is a $2.5 million change in the budget. Um, and I'm just not comfortable without having a policy discussion. However, that being said, I don't think that there's any I don't think there's any harm um, in cutting this uh, because it can come back in December. However, if there is even the slightest chance that it would impact somebody's health insurance, um, I would never want to do that. I wouldn't even want to put it up for a vote to, to, to put people on the on the hook for that. So with that being said, I think I made my point here clear that and I think that uh, my colleagues who spoke as well did that if we're going to have a shift in policy regarding the college, um, just as Councilor McCarthy said, we, we all support the college. We all want it to succeed. Uh, but maybe it's time that the council start having discussions about how the college can be successful and how the city support, um, what role the city support will play in that. So with that being said, I don't want to jeopardize anybody's um, health insurance, especially in a time like this. It's incredibly tone deaf. Um, so I'll withdraw the motion. Uh, I, I appreciate that we had the discussion. I'm sorry if it was if anyone deems it a waste of time, but I'll withdraw the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we had a motion to make a cut of 2.4. We're now withdrawing the motion. Move approval of the budget. Okay, I'll move yes, approval please. of the health insurance by Council Palmucci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Could I, um, um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, could I have a roll call? Can we have a roll call on that one, please? Okay, a roll call vote on the um, on the health insurance. Absolutely. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Had, is it the, being, being with the motion to approve? Okay. We withdrew the okay health and insurance. That, I understand. Yeah. All right. Very good. You all set, Bill? Yep. Okay. Um, and I'm looking for a positive recommendation for 2021 
general fund budget as amended. Because All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, on the motion, Council Yang? Oh, no, I was just making a motion. Okay. Okay. Um, well, we got through that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, a little lengthy, but uh, with that, I'll make a, uh, a motion to adjourn the Finance Committee meeting. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and switch gears because I know we're running a little over time. I apologize. Um, but I would like to call to order the Monday, June 15th City Council meeting via remote video conferencing. And we actually have with us the Assistant City Clerk um, to run tonight's meeting, uh, which I'm really excited about. Joe, you're always a pleasure you. to have. And so, um, Mr. Clerk, I was trying to figure out if I should call you Mr. Clerk or Sir Clerk or Joe or Joe Clerk, but I think Joe's I'm going to go with Mr. President. Clerk. Um, <laughs> you could call the roll, please. Great. Adam Clark. Uh, President. Present. Council Crow. Present. Council DeBona. Present. Council Harris. Present. Council Mahoney. Present. Council McCarthy. <clears throat> Councilor Palmucci. Present. Council Phelan. Present. President <clears throat> Liang. Present. Nine members. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And if everyone could just join me um, in a moment of silence and honor all, all the women and men serving here and abroad, as well as all of the frontline workers who are continuing to fight this pandemic. Thank you. And in honor of Pride Month, it is my incredible honor to have uh, Sheikah Babin join us here this evening. Sheikah is not only an incredible Quincy advocate and um, activist, but she's also um, chair of Q Pride as well as a member of the city's LGBTQ commission. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to attempt to share my screen here. We haven't been able to do this before. Um, and if everyone can join me in welcoming Sheikah, uh, please help us to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag United States, United States of America, of the United States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible. with liberty indivisible. and justice yes. for all. Chica, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Clerk. If you could read the open meeting law, please. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording for this public meeting or transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and not deemed acknowledged and permissible. Thank you. And in accordance with Governor Charles D. Baker's March 10, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, the Quincy City Council is holding the City Council meeting via remote video conferencing services and it's being aired on Quincy Access Television, QATV, channel QATV9, Government Access. I hope that is the last time we will ever have to read that to you all. Um, and with that, before we start our regularly scheduled council meeting, I'd like to recognize Councilor Pamucci. Got uh, me now? Sorry about that. Um, thank you, Madam President. I think, um, I just want to take a moment to recognize uh, Pride Month. Uh, it's uh, usually uh, a more festive month than it has been this particular year, given the, the pandemic and everything that's going on. Um, but uh, June is traditionally uh, a month we celebrate Pride because it's the month where um, the, the Stonewall riots occurred in 1969, which was a, uh, uh, essentially the spark that lit the gay rights movement in America. Uh, this, uh, groups of individuals who were fighting repression um, and police brutality. Uh, and it's just fitting at this moment in our, you know, in our national uh, environment and what's being, what's happening on the streets of America over the past several weeks. Uh, it's a very similar, a similar fight against repression. Um, and I just think it, it's, it's worth having, taking a moment and, and reflecting upon that, um, that it is pride month and we won't get to have a pride uh, day festivities that, that uh, we've had in years past to come together. And I think it's just important that we as a council come, come together tonight and recognize um, 
one uh, that all the work that's been done in Quincy by so many people, including uh, Chica and Quincy Pride, and I know other councilors have been involved, Council Mahoney, Council Liang, and others, um, in putting together events and, and making Quincy more welcoming and more inclusive. Uh, we've come a long way. Still have a lot more to do. Uh, we have more work to do in this area and others, but um, but it's a good opportunity to come together uh, and recognize the the progress that we have made in this regard. And I just I just want to close with a quote from Harvey Milk, who's a uh -huh. fellow city councilor uh, to us in in San Francisco. Uh, and his his comments uh, relative to to gay pride were: uh, It takes no compromise to give people their rights. It takes no money to respect the individual. It takes no political deal to give people freedom. And it takes no survey to remove repression. So we just to keep that in mind um, as we, we proceed through the, the rest of our, our meeting here and as we proceed through the rest of Pride Month. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Sheikah. Thank you, Thank Counselor. You, Sheikah, I wanna just give you a few moments as well if you have anything that you'd like to say um, to us and, and to any other viewers at home in recognition of Pride Month. Well, of course, I want to say happy pride to everyone, um, and especially to our neighbors and community leaders uh, here in Quincy. Um, thank you. It's an honor to be here, and uh, it's, it's really uh, warming to receive uh, your acknowledgement of pride and the work that is being done in the city. Um, thank you. Uh, each of you has have contributed in so many ways, um, and so I'm looking forward to partnering and working with you as we move forward to make Quincy a more inclusive and a better city. Very well said. Thank you so much, Sheikha. And before I let you go, I just want to do a round robin and see if there's anybody that has any questions or mm -hmm. comments or anything that they'd like to add before we proceed with tonight's meeting. Oh, Council Mahoney? I just want to say happy Pride to everybody out there. And then also to remember, if we can on Friday on June 19th, it's Juneteenth, Juneteenth Day as well. And that's actually a very important time in our history as well. So June is an important month. It is about inclusivity, it's about bringing people together, and it's about making sure that we respect one another. And I just want to thank Sheikha for being here. It's been a long road here in Quincy, and I'm just so proud that um, that we are here. We're seeing these revelations that we should have been able to see much sooner than we have, but we're here now. So thank you very much, Sheikha, for joining us tonight, and happy Pride to everybody for the month of June. And um, if we can, take a moment, of, moment on Friday as well to um, be respectful of that day as well. It's historic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Councillor. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add before we move to a council meeting? Let me just look around here. Yeah, I just wanted to ask for an elaboration from my colleague on what Juneteenth <laughs> is. Well, actually, it is. It's a very important day, and it's, you're going to put me on the spot, but it's um, it's known as Freedom Day, and it actually was the um, Libertarian Day for the Black of the Fourth of July, and it's American. It's an American holiday that's it commens commensurates from June. 1865 from the Civil War. Um, it was the day that um, slavery was considered free at that time. But then it has been a challenge, obviously, throughout the decades, because this has been an ongoing fight in, um, in, in the situation that we're in. And we just have to be really recognizing the things that we're doing as we go forward and we have these conversations. So it's very nice of you to recognize. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Sheeta, thank you so much again for being with us today and, and, and um, helping us to honor and to celebrate Pride Month. Again, it's not exactly how I think all of us wanted to celebrate it together, but we are at least together virtually, and I will certainly take that any day. So um, seriously, thank you so much for everything you've done in the community, um, well, not this year, you. but with everything that's been happening. So um, keep it up. You know that you have you know nine supporters here on the council. Anything we can do, you know where to find us. Thank you. You guys take care. Thanks, Sheikha. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, Mr. Clerk, if you could go to the first item on the agenda, please. First item on the agenda is uh, Council Order 2020-094. It's appropriation for $434,892-70. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Mr. McCarthy. Yes, thank you, President. Um, in your package, it's a breakdown of the... Um, monies that need to be transferred at the end of the year. Uh, the listing's in there. I won't go through the whole listing unless folks have particular questions. I uh, list everything from public building, personnel services, down to substance abuse. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve 434-892-70. Great. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second the motion. Bill Harris. 
Councilor Harris, any questions on this item specifically for the 434,000? Okay, seeing none. Mr. Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Sure. Council Kane? Yes. Council Crow? Yes. Council DeBona? Yes. Council Harris? Yes. Council Mahoney? Yes. Council McCarthy? Yes. Council Palmucci? Yes. Council Phelan? President Liang? Yes. Item number two, an appropriation for 540,000 to traffic parking, alarm and lighting, personal services for reserve, uh, for reserve for appropriation parking receipts. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Council McCarthy. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, again, um, 540,000 is uh, looking to be transferred um, uh, to traffic parking, alarm and lighting personnel. The same to be transferred from reserve for appropriation for parking receipts. So I make a motion to approve. A motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second motion. by Councilor Harris. Um, does anybody have any questions on this item? Uh, again, the 540000 to TPAL. Um, seeing none, I actually do have a question quickly, and I don't know um, who this would go to, but I think we had originally appropriated or anticipated we were going to get 600000 in for this item, and we're now looking at 540000 Are we going to be able to get the remaining 60000 in before the end of the year? And if not, um, I mean, this is still a lot closer than I thought we were going to get. So I'm pretty happy about that, but I'm just curious to see if we are going to get, um, you know, any of the remaining 60,000 to hit the 600,000 mark. So oh, Madam Potter, I see your hand raised. Oh, we can't hear you. Jen Manning's on the move. Okay, Madam Moderator, I'm sorry. If you can just give us one moment, we can't hear you. Sorry, sorry. Oh, there Today, you are. Yeah, here I am. Sorry. To date, we received five hundred and forty thousand nine seventy four in the account. We have about three weeks left to post from the treasurer's office on receipts. Um, it is anticipated that they will reach the six hundred thousand dollar offset. However, in that particular department, this the full six hundred thousand dollars was actually not needed. So this five hundred and forty thousand will co will cover what was um, anticipated. That's great. Thank you so much, Madam Auditor. Um, you're Ms. If you're out there in T Pal, great job. I appreciate it. Uh, so we have a motion to approve by Councilor McCarthy, seconded by Councilor Harris. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Crow. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Okay, next item, please. Next item on the agenda is Council Order 2020-096 is appropriation for 50284 the Park Department Personal Service for Community Preservation Fund Administration. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and recognize Council McCarthy. Yeah, I'd um, like to make a motion to uh, the Park Department of Personnel Services from Community Preservation in the amount of 50284 Thank you. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? A motion. Second the motion. Seconded by Councilor Harris. Uh, Councilor Mahoney? Can I just ask what this is for, just out of curiosity? For you, Madam, Mr. Madam President, this is the annual uh, cost for the administrator of the CPC. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Does anybody else have any question, Any other questions on this item? Okay, seeing none. Mr. Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Councilor Kane. Yes. Council Grove. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Next item, please. Next item on the agenda is a 2020-097. It's appropriation for one million two hundred seventy. 219 to Community Preservation Historic and Recreation Projects. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Councilor uh, Thank you, Madam President. I appreciate um, um, tonight being on here with everybody. Um, just real quick with the CPC this year, it was uh, very challenging, obviously, with the COVID-19. But just to talk a little bit about some of the projects, and um, thank you to our administrator, Kirsten Powers, for her hard work on this, and our new uh, chairperson, um, Scott Campbell, this, this past year. Um, it was some good stuff, obviously, that was been a, um, 
um, projects that are put in the pipeline from these different groups. Um, one of the biggest items that we've done, and we haven't done affordable housing in, in a few years, is we did a $500,000 uh, um, NeighborWorks housing solutions, affordable housing. So um, I know um, I, one of our counselors, Mahoney, would be very happy with that. Um, some of the other projects, real quick, before we get into the approval of it, is um, the public building is to construct a new handicap accessible ramp from the Hancock Adams Common to the main level of the United uh, First Parish Church, uh, allowing for access to the elevator to the presidential crypts. I think that's a very important project that was approved um, or, or going to get approved. Existing conditions and needs assessments of the exterior Richardson and Atkin buildings for the Thomas Crane Public Library. Um, there was also a Hancock Cemetery tomb restoration um, of 25 tombs in the areas of the um, Hancock Cemetery. It was also a nice project um, that came in from the United States Naval Ship uh, Building Museum, USS Salem, um, a preser preservation, um, and also Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum, and also the National Society of uh, Colonial Dames of America. Um, total projects include $1,270,219 uh, to the Community Preservation Historical and Recreation Projects. I'd like to make that in the form of a motion to Great approve. Great work, Counselor. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we have a motion to approve. Uh, do we have second. a second? Second. Second by Counselor Phelan. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Oh, you're muted, Mr. Clerk. Hold on one moment. Mr. Clerk? You just got to hit the accept button to unmute yourself. That's my fault. Sorry about the cousin. <laughs> no worries. Counselor Kane. Yes. Counselor Kroll. Yes. Counselor DeBona. Yes. Counselor Harris. Yes. Counselor Mahoney. Yes. Counselor McCarthy. Yes. Counselor Palmucci. Yes. Counselor Phelan. Yes. President Leang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. No more muting yourself. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Next item on the agenda, please. Uh, number 5, 2020 It's appropriation for 40000 to the Quincy Historical Society, tourism from hotel, motel tax, tourism. Great. Thank you. Council McCarthy? Yeah, motion to approve the 40000 to the Quincy Historical Society uh, from the hotel, motel. Thank you. I'd actually like to second that if that's all right with folks. Uh, does anybody have any questions on here? No? Okay. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Sure. Council Kane. Yes. Council Kroll. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Next item. Next item is 2020 is an appropriation for 175,693 to tourism from hotel motel tax tourism. Thank you, Council McCarthy. Motion to approve 175-693 personnel services contractual expenditures uh, in that line. Thank you. Do we have a second? Seconded by Bill Harris. Thank you, Council Harris. Uh, Mr. Clerk. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, does anybody have any questions on this before we move forward? Uh, can I just ask one question? Of course. I was just curious exactly what it was for. For you, Madam President. If that's to me, I'm sorry. I see the auditor's hand, hand oh, raised while well, I, I would defer. Who do you want, Council Fano? Um, I'll take our auditor. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Okay, thank you. Uh, so it, in, the, in the fiscal year 20 budget, the city council voted on a tourism budget. In that tourism budget, it was covered through oh. offsets made with the hotel motel um, money or funds that come into the city. Um, under the tourism piece. So all this order is, is it's filling in the offset to make that department whole at the end of the year. Okay, I I just never seen it before, so. Okay, thank you, I'm, I'm in favor. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor, thank you, Madam Auditor. Um, any other questions on this item? Okay. Mr. Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Council Kane. Yes. Council Crow. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pamucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Next item, please. Next item is 2020 
1.5-100. It's an appropriation for 1660000 to Quincy Public Schools and Quincy Access Television from Comcast. Thank you. Council McCarthy? Motion to approve 1.660000 to Quincy Public Schools and Quincy Access Television. The form of motion. It. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Harris. Any questions on this item? Okay, Mr. Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Crow. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Number eight, please. Number eight is 2020-101. It's an appropriation. Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, setting the limits of what may be expended in fiscal year 2021 from department revol departmental revolving accounts. Motion Thank to you. motion to approve and motion to have my colleagues refer to the revolving funds broken down um, by uh, certain departments in the city, but a motion to approve it. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Council McCarthy. Do we have a second? Uh, seconded by Councilor Harris. Any questions on this item? Okay, seeing none. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Crow. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Leanne. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Number nine, please, Mr. Clerk. The nine is 202102. It's an order for water and sewer enterprise funds debt service deferral. Thank you. Um, do we have a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Council McCarthy, seconded by Councillor Harris. Um, any questions on this item? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councillor King. Yes. Councillor Crow. Yes. Councillor DeBona. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine months. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, could I get a motion to approve the uh, previous meeting minutes, please? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Council McCarthy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Communications and reports from the mayor, other city officers, and city boards. Have some uh, traffic, Madam Clerk. Yeah. Okay, you got it. I mean, from Madam President. Sorry. No worries. Um, we have about we have nine, so I'll just read them in. Uh, Ward one. Oh, sorry. We have uh, add handicap parking to one twenty four Albatross Road. At no parking west side of Curlew Road, six hundred fifty feet north of C Street to seven hundred fifty feet north of C Street. In Ward 2, we have an add handicap parking at 18 Berkeley Street. We have a remove handicap parking loading zone at 537 Washington. Ward 4, we have add stop sign Kitta Street southbound at Granite Street. Ward 5, we have add do not enter on Kitta Street northbound at Granite. Add no, uh, add do not enter on Kitta Street northbound at Garfield. Add one way on Kitta Street southbound from Quarry Street to Granite Street. And in Ward 5, also, we have remove handicap parking at 46 Houston Street. And those communications have been. Great, thank you. Any other communications? Okay, seeing none, unfinished business and proceeding meeting. Okay, moving on, reports of committee. Um, Madam Chair? Yes, Councilor Harris? Yes, this evening um, uh, we held a, a public hearing, uh, was held prior to this evening's uh, city council meeting at 6 p.m. Um, uh, 2020056 uh, utility grant of location Mass Electric 56 and 72 Colonial Drive. Positive recommendation from the Public Works Committee. Motion for approval. Okay, motion to approve. Um, I don't remember if this is, I apologize, Mr. Clerk, or, or maybe this mm -hmm. the clerk can help. Is this the one where we could just do um, a voice vote or do we have to do a roll call vote? Uh, I, I believe these are the public hearing ones. Uh, these are the one we have the public hearing on. I, I believe you need a, you need a, uh, a roll call vote. Okay, and I see this is City Clerk uh, nodding her head as well. Thank you. All right, so with that, Mr. Clerk, if you could um, call the roll, please. Sure. Council Kane. Yes. Council Crow. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. 
Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Leang. Yes. And I will just say too, I think uh, Council Harris made the motion, but there wasn't a second. So I'd like to second that for the Absolutely. record. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, again, uh, this evening, 2020-057 uh, grant Mass Electric Calvin Road Broad Meadows Middle School. Positive recommendation from the Public Works Committee. Motion for approval. Great. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council McCarthy. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Council Kane. Yes. Council Crow. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. I know. And 2020-088 utility grant of location 76 Field Street. Positive recommendation for the Public Works Committee. Motion for approval. Great. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Phelan. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Yes. Council Kane. Yes. Council Crow. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council uh, Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Thank you. And last but not least, 2020 uh, 089, uh, <coughs> location of uh, Mass Grid Gas Dimmick Street. Positive recommendation from the Public Works Committee. Motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council McCarthy. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Council Kane. Yes. Council Crow. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pamucci. Yes. Council of Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Is that all, Ms. Uh, Council Harris? That's it. Uh, that's it for the uh, until the break. Thank you. Uh, until next time. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> Any other reports of committees? Uh, Council Mahoney? Um, if I could, I'd like to um, ask if we could take out of um, out of committee um, for ordinance 2020-86. Um, it was the order to establish the Quincy Health Department regulations and the general administration procedures. Um, and I'd like to defer to Councilor Yang to discuss. Thank you. Um, and I would like to obviously make a motion to approve this item. I had submitted it to um, the ordinance committee and I want to thank ordinance chair Mahoney for bringing this out. This was an item that I had submitted um, after having some conversations with Ruthie, our health commissioner, after that death, uh, the first death, unfortunately, that we had at the Walmart, I just, you know, was really frustrated to know that we have so many people here in the city, specifically even in the health department, who are out 24-7 and have been out 24-7 the last three and a half months, making sure that any businesses that are open are abiding by certain restrictions and regulations to protect not only the public, but more importantly, their workers. And so... This is something that we put together um, or that Ruthie that had put together in recommendation to say that, you know, while they certainly do have oversight in a number of different areas um, to make sure that they are abiding by health regulations, that there is no way to currently find them for anything that they do see um, with any, you know, instances that they're they're not following those regulations or protocols. And it just it, it puts more teeth into the work that they're doing right now, particularly right now, as we are starting to reopen the state, we're starting to reopen the city. I think that we are doing a great job in this process of doing it. We are taking the right and proper precautions, but I want to make sure that we're also giving um, the tools to the folks who are out there to make sure that we are following these protocols as we reopen. So this is um, which is uh, Master General Law Chapter 40, Section 21D, which essentially allows departments like the health department to go in and write fines for um, any violations that they already do cite right now. Um, so Ruthie does currently have that oversight, but she does not have the ability to write citations. So this would allow her to then write citations to any violations that she does see. Um, and with that, again, I'd like to make a motion to approve. I would second it. Okay, so seconded by Councillor Phelan. Do we have any questions on this before we move forward? Uh, Councillor Palmucci. Yeah, just um, thank you. Uh, Madam President, thank you for bringing this in. I 
I had um, missed um, the portion of that oversight meeting when we discussed this. I came in a little bit late. And I just, for the record, I'm going to vote against this, but for the record, I just want to uh, state why. I, I looked into some of the, the CMRs that are cited by the state statute, and I was just concerned with what could be a very strict application of some of them. Um, uh, little things like requiring um, an engineered, an engineer stamped document prior to getting a pool installation permit. Uh, that's like a you know four thousand dollar expense. Uh, I just I, so I'm I'm not going to vote for it, and I apologize that I'm to you, Madam President, that I'm voting against it without having participated in the shaping of the legislation, which I would have done at another time. Um, I think you'll have the votes to pass it, but I just wanted to um, state that and, and thank you for. For bringing it up i do think that giving um uh the uh, public health department the ability to, to issue citations is an important um is an important function and one that they should have had a long time ago so i'm glad we're, we're solving that part but i just wanted to clarify why i was so thank you thank you counselor any other questions or comments uh counselor Phelan. madam chairman for you for you uh madam president um i i look at this as almost like Back years ago, we put in dumpsters where we were able to health department to write tickets on it. And I'm looking at that as almost the same thing. And that helped us close in a lot of dumpsters at the time. And I think I think these regulations, I think the health department has proven their worth and they do a great job and they've done a great job in this uh, this thing. And I, I think the unfortunate thing that happened, that happened at Walmart, I know that's one of the things that triggered it. I, I mean, we all feel for the family and everything like that. Who, who that happened to, and maybe if we had a little more bite in some of our ordinances, things could have been done earlier to, to prevent something like that. So, Madam, Madam President, I, I commend you for bringing this in, and I will be voting yes on this. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, and I just want to take this opportunity to also um, make some clarifying points, because I think uh, when I had first brought this in, I had brought it in with another order uh, related specifically to trash, and those are two completely separate orders. and. The one related to trash is one that we're waiting until the fall to have a much um, fuller conversation around. This one that's before us tonight is um, specifically around the general administrative procedures for Ruthie and the health department. So just again, to you know, create some clarification around that. Um, and it is specifically for a certain number of regulations that they were looking at with the state general code. And so Ruthie, again, went through and made sure that she was looking at only the ones that she currently has oversight under. So it's um, like for fitness centers, for recreational camps, for swimming pools, beaches, um, storage and disposal of infectious or da physically dangerous medical or biological waste and minimum standards for food, food establishments. So these are the sections that she had picked out just to have um, you know, the, the ability to write citations around those areas and nothing else outside of it because this is um, pertaining to the areas that she already currently has oversight for. So again, just to offer a little bit more clarification as well. Um, but I again want to give the space for any other questions or, or comments on this. Okay, seeing none. So uh, there's a motion to approve made by myself, uh, seconded by, um, oh, sorry, Council Mahoney, go ahead. Just a quick question. Um, so when you said for the for restaurants, any of the restaurants, if it's, that, that will give the ability to be able to go in and check on the restaurants too. Because I do, there are phone calls I've gotten. People are very excited that restaurants are open, but then there are people that are concerned too. So that will that will also be something that if there's anybody that's concerned, they can probably and should be able to go to the restaurant and take a look at things, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and, just, as of right now, and, and I think um, I would also defer to Mr. Walker to elaborate a little bit more on you know, any additional precautions we're taking right now because we are reopening in a time that's not, um, you know, I mean, I, the health department will always be going in, you know, and checking on things. Inspectional services always goes in as well and checks on things in any given time. But right. again, under current circumstances, I'd like to know also um, what additional measures we're taking that could be helpful and informative in this process. Sure, through you, Madam President. So we've sort of divvied up the enforcement mechanism relative to the restaurant reopening. Um, Mr. Duker and ISD will be handling all potential capacity issues. Um, and Ruthie and the health commission and the health inspectors will continue on uh, okay. the food. There's, there's a lot going on in the food and uh, there's always there's a lot going on in the health department as we all know anyways. Um, so, you know, we had a team meeting with the folks on the license board the, the health commissioner with Jay Dukas folks, the police department, and it was determined that the Mr. Okay. Dukas team could handle the, uh, together with the license board enforcement operation, be the police department could handle the capacity issues, which we think 
in the building issues, meaning the space between tables, um, the other guidelines that are in place relative to the actual building itself, the tents, the, the outdoor the outdoor seating arrangements um, that we approved roughly 40 of in the last week or so. Um, Jay's team has really taken the lead on that from a building perspective. Of course, the Commissioner of Public Health is involved, as is the PD, as is the license board. Uh, but we're looking at Jay's team having to potentially step up a little bit, a little bit more than they already do uh, in terms of the, the capacity things, which we see as one of the potential hotspot issues that when folks start to get out there a little bit uh, and then they start getting a little bit more crowded and, you know, things are open and people are sort of pushing that limit. Um, you know, we saw some some scenes from from some places, uh, not in Quincy yet, but in town and, you know, even in New York where you just had large gatherings where it did not appear that people uh, were adequately physically spaced. Um, those are sort of the things from the, the enforcement perspective uh, that we're a little bit uh, keen on uh, going forward. Thank you. Does that help to, to elaborate a little bit for you, Councillor? It does. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So um, again, I made a motion to approve, seconded by Councillor Phelan. Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Crow. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Pamucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Leanne. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Any other items, Councilor? Not for me, not for today. Thank you. Great. <coughs> Okay, and last but certainly not least, uh, Council McCarthy. Thank you, Madam President. I'll make this quick. Um, first, thanks everyone. Uh, I thought we had some good spirited meetings, got a lot of work done quickly and uh, had a very uh, strange um, last few months of the fiscal year. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the fiscal 2021 uh, general budget $340,119,125.91. I put that in the form of a motion. Okay, motion to approve. Do we have a second? Councilor Harris? Yes. Okay, any questions or a comment? Uh, Councilor Mahoney? Just on the motion, um, I am going to be supporting the budget tonight, but I but I say that because I'm still a little concerned because we are, it's an estimate in, in the situation that we're in with COVID-19 and the budget and the fact that many people are, are out of work right now. Um, I do think that we, we did our best to try to bring the budget in as tight as we could. I, there were some areas of the budget that I was concerned with where things we, we, we just didn't recognize or didn't know what the answers were. The $2.5 million from last year for college makes me a little weary. Um, but I'm, I'm saying yes to this with the idea that we will be coming back if there is to be, if we end up having more monies taken away from us from the state level. So that we'll be able to come back in September and re-look re at this budget, which was promised by the administration that we would be able to do that. And with the anticipation that when we get our free, when we certify our free cash and uh, we certify our, um, our 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 new homes coming on, our new taxes coming on from um, new growth, that we will not be having a tax increase to anybody in the city of Quincy. That was what was guaranteed to us with this budget, and that's what I'm going to hold the administration um, to when we come forward with this. So I'm going to I'm going to approve this. But if there's any changes that happens, whether it's less money coming in from the state or less money coming in from free cash, I'm going to anticipate they're going to be going back to this budget to look at it. So thank you very much. Great point, Councillor. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, Councillor Harris. Yes. Um, if, if I uh, if I remember right, I I just heard Ms. Smalley say something about it was guaranteed, but there was no guarantee that we don't know what's going going to take place there's a possibility that you know the things things could very easily go the wrong way like it is in some of the states um that uh aren't, didn't do the right thing i think massachusetts is doing the right thing but uh am i do i have that right i i heard it real quick and i just yeah, uh, yeah. so point of clarification what i said was that the budget that we're passing tonight yeah. It comes with some caveats, which will be, we don't know what the state's going to come back with with their budget. We were very conservative in the budget when we were anticipating a 20% decline 
in the revenues that we'd get from this from the state should the revenues be lower than that then the budget wouldn't be able to hold true because we wouldn't have the revenues that we thought we were going to be able to bring in and we would have to go back to the table to take a look at this because what we did actually say to the constituents of the city of quincy is that we were going to try to hold the line of taxes right. and you know if if we cannot if we if we get the free cash because we are, we're raising the budget by about 10 million dollars and we do have some revenue deficits that we're going to have to account for so right. we will definitely we'll definitely need to to make that up and one of them was with new growth which we're anticipating um there was an estimate provided to us by mr mason of about 5.5 million dollars but then we also have uh, obviously some free cash that we're going to hopefully be getting back i think we're our expenses to date, we've spent 95% of our, our 2020 budget. And I know the departments have all pulled their pulled their belts in. So hopefully we're going to have um, a good certification for free cash. So that's what I'm, I'm saying, Bill. I'm not I'm saying that. Down. I'm just yeah, saying that we ha if, if it doesn't come true, we're going to come back and we take a look at this budget right. so we don't open taxes. Okay? Because exactly, because speaking with the folks um, that I represent, and uh, it's one of the things that, you know, there is no guarantee, but we're going to do the best that we can. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody has a crystal ball. If there was a crystal ball, we'll all be, we would all be millionaires. We wouldn't be on the Zoom. We'd be, we'd be in the Bahamas or somewhere else. <laughs> I'd be on Zoom in the Bahamas, you know. So. <laughs> well, we, nobody would be running for us. <laughs> as as I just want to Bill say, Harris. No, I appreciate that. Um, I know that, you know, a lot of people did. we put a lot of work into this one and, you know, as we do every year. And this, this is something that I think um, was even more challenging. So because of yeah, many know, personal professional reasons and doing it over Zoom, I don't think um, made it any simpler. So thank you. Um, any other questions or? I'll give credit to you, uh, President Liang, and, um, and uh, of course, uh, the finance chairman uh, with this budget. He, he did a good job. He did a great job. Well, as everybody, good, good input, good output. Thank you. I agree. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or comments on on the motion? Just real Councilor quick, Bona? Um, just to elaborate a little. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just to elaborate, I think uh, um, Finance Chair Count, uh, Council McCarthy did a great job with moving these um, the the dialect along, um, having a time clock, which I always talked about. Our and he stood by it and he kept it going. So. I think he did a fantastic job of, of get, keeping this um, to the points and um, and had to call some people out when he needed to. So um, I commend him, did a great job, and looking forward to um, 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other questions or comments on the motion to approve the fiscal year 21 budget? Okay, with that, Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Crow. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Anything else, Councilor? Yes. Uh, sewer Enterprise account. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, in the amount of $25,639,239.37. Yes. You got it. So we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Phelan. Any questions on this item? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councillor Kane. Yes. Councillor Crow. Yes. Councillor DeBona. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Mahoney. Yes. Councillor McCarthy. Yes. Councillor Palmucci. Yes. Councillor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Motion passes. And uh, lastly, the Water Enterprise 2021 appropriation for eighteen million five hundred ninety-four thousand nine hundred and fifty-six and thirteen cents in the form of a motion. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve. Do so we have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Phelan. Any questions on this item? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Clerk. Council Kane. Yes. Council Crow. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Any other items, Councillor? That's it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. And Councillor, great job on the budget this year. I know um, Thank I you. doing it virtually and managing it virtually is not the easiest thing. And 
um, I think between all the departments and all the questions and um, all the supporting materials that we needed, uh, you went above and beyond and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, presentations of petitions, memorials and remonstrance. Okay, seeing none. Motions. Uh, hi, hi. Oh. hello. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't see your hands. <laughs> Councillor Kane, I saw your hand shoot up first, and then Councillor Debona will go to you. Sorry about that, Councillors. Well, so you saw our hand, and then you said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Selective viewing on Zoom. All right. right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I um I just wanted to share some some good news and some gratitude. Um, you know, we recently, in collaboration with the mayor and with Quincy Public Schools, we held a writing competition for uh, all the students of Quincy. We called it the COVID-19 writing competition. And um, out of, you know, we've got some odd 9,000 students in the city. We had uh, 821 submissions uh, for this contest uh, from grades K through 12. And, um, you know, it was amazing to be able to have a perspective from some of the young people, what they're feeling during this time, uh, during the pandemic, during the time that they've been made to stay at home. And, um, you know, they've been spending extra time with their families. Clearly, they've been spending more time uh, playing video games. Uh, but you get the full gamut of emotions. You get um, students who are bored. You have students who are anxious. You have students um, who are looking forward to the bright side of things and the other side of this pandemic and to when life can become somewhat normal again. And obviously, there's been such a disruption in uh, their education. And you know, it still is yet to be foreseen uh, what will happen uh, with education in the fall when, when things, if things go back to normal. But I do just want to recognize and congratulate all the students of the city for, for participating. And I want to recognize the individuals who uh, who won the competition. So I'm just going to read some of their names. So from uh, high school, uh, the first prize winner was Dominique Dong. She's a, a ninth grade student at North Quincy High. The second place was Cassie Gordon, a 10th grader at Quincy High School. And third place was uh, Dustin Baker, who's a 12th grader at Quincy High School. In middle school, uh, Kyle Tolini, uh, an eighth grader at Atlantic Middle School, took first place. Uh, Kira Lee from Central Middle School, an eighth grader, uh, took second place. And third place from Broadmeadows, uh, eighth grade, Ganilo uh, Quintos. From elementary school, the first prize went to Hunter Wood from Southwest Middle School, fifth grader. The second went to Kirtana Upala from uh, Clifford Marshall School, and uh, she's in the fourth grade or finishing the fourth grade. And then the last, uh, third place, Jack Hurley from Atherton Howe Elementary School. Um, so congratulations to all those winners. We're going to be uh, running around tomorrow and presenting them their prizes. And we're going to be sitting down with Joe Catalano on Thursday so that they can read their pieces. And so you can uh, hear from them the words that, that they put forward and the hard work that they put together. Um, so in addition, uh, I just want to thank uh, some folks who made this possible. We put together a pool of $10,000 to give directly to uh, the students, which is which is wonderful. So I want to thank uh, George Burke, former city council, former uh, uh, district attorney. I want to thank the mayor for his contribution. Uh, Fiend and Financial Group, Excess Brokers, Mr. Brian Riddell, Mr. Paul Adamson, E.L. Barrett and Company, uh, Council President Nina Liang, City Council Brad Kroll, uh, Quincy Education Association, the Wallace and Hill Neighborhood Association, as well as the Montclair Wallace Neighborhood Association. Um, so, you know, uh, thank you, Madam President, for your time and, and look forward to seeing those uh, those stories come out soon. Thank you. I really appreciate the um, the work that you did around this. It's it's I think incredibly impressive and wonderful to have an outlet um, because there is social media and there's ways that people can get on the phones and you know be on Zoom or listen in or there's so many other ways that people have been getting involved. But it all has to do with staring at a screen, which is in and of itself very draining and emotional and overwhelming. So to be able to take um, pen to paper or even fingers to keyboards and write something and really you know get that out of your head and put on paper um, is really important. For kids and so to provide that space for them i think was awesome and i really appreciate you doing that well, that's council. beautiful thank you for your support thank you. President. congratulations um council debona thank you madam president just want to um say a huge thank you to the flag day um committee and the mayor and the administration for having the celebration yesterday unfortunately we couldn't do the parade but i will tell you yesterday will go down as one of the days that i will remember um of the COVID 19 pandemic that we were allowed to do the actual drive under the flag, the American flag with the firefighters hoisting it by Veterans Memorial Stadium, just to see the smiles on people's faces again. Um, it's been tough for the last few months and to see that, and it, it kind of made me proud to say, listen, I, I'm from Quincy. I, this is my hometown and we, we're a city. 
but that was a huge small town feel yesterday. And um, I know some of the other colleagues were there as well as some of the administration and staff. And um, I don't know if you felt the feeling, but I definitely did. And um, it was good to say um, that Quincy is proud to say that we're, we're going in the right direction. We're doing the right things here. And um, I see the a city flourish. So a lot of smiles yesterday. It was really nice. So just want to say, I hope we continue to do that as uh, with the parade or whatever we can do. It was really nice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I agree. And I think um, seeing that flag up there was really impressive. And I know our colleagues were there joining us as well. It's really insane to see, you know, a 50 foot flag and to know that the original one that's usually up at the um, at the field is 80 feet. And so it's really impressive. Um, but thank you, Councillor. I really appreciate you, you mentioning that and bringing that up. Um, any other presentations of petitions, memorials or remonstrances? Okay, seeing none. Uh, motions, orders and resolutions. All right, scheduling of committee meetings and public hearings. You mean no one's planning out through December and September? And <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Pamucci? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, you can hear me, right? I can, yes. I was messing with the mute button earlier. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to um, uh, let folks know that uh, myself, Councillor Liang, Councillor Mahoney, and Councillor Cole uh, will be beginning uh, on June 17th at 6 p.m. We'll be beginning a community discussion series. Uh, it'll be on Zoom. Uh, the purpose is to provide an opportunity for residents and members of our community to come together uh, to have an open and respectful uh, discussion and dialogue about equality and equity among racial and ethnic um, uh, differences in our community and how we can uh, improve Quincy for everybody. Um, we have three discussions planned right now we kind of follow the process as it goes um, in an organic way um, where the discussion takes us see where the discussion leads us but the first one is june 17th at 6 p.m um, and you can go to council liang's facebook page and get all the details about how to log in so everyone's welcome to come um, and we hope to see folks on there and we look forward to uh learning you know i look forward to hearing people's uh, personal stories and yeah. and thoughts about what we can do to make Quincy a better place. So I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. So hopefully people can join us. Thank you, Council. I know that this is something um, that you've been incredibly passionate about even before what's been happening the last couple of weeks. And so I really want to just thank you. I know, um, again, you know, we've all been on the phone, I think, in emails and phone calls um, pretty regularly around making sure that we do this right. And there is no 100% right way of doing it. It's making sure that we don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And so I recognize um, that you've, you've put a lot of um, emotional and professional commitment behind this, and I appreciate that. So thank you, Councillor. Um, any other scheduling of committee meetings or public hearings? Okay, seeing none. Um, I do just want to say that as we come out of this, hopefully the next meeting we have will be in person. Um, it hasn't been perfect. I know there's been glitches. I know there's been like muting and unmuting issues and video issues and like volume issues and random people turning on their videos and whatnot. But um, honestly, I, I'm so impressed with every single one of you being, you know, on this and working through this so smoothly, running public hearings to my committee chairs. Um, you've been incredible. And I so appreciate how you've looped in the public to participate in this. Um, to my committee chairs as well, you guys actually ran um, public hearings before I did any public hearings on Zoom. So thank you so much for taking that leap and doing that. Um, I know I've said it a number of times, but I, you know, be remiss if I didn't say it again. Seriously, thank you guys so, so much. I think we definitely set the standard for a lot of folks to um, to look to us to see how we've done this and done it well. So um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate all of you, um, to my colleagues, to everyone in the council office. Um, and with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Stay Excellent. safe, everyone. Good to see you. Thanks, everyone. Nice uh, to see everybody. Take care. Have a good summer. Thank you.